This video will introduce the Laplace transform and uh, give you a little bit of background on how it's used, um, give you the mathematical definitions of both the forward transform and the inverse Laplace transform, and uh, talk a little bit about uh, issues associated with taking Laplace transforms. Uh, subsequent videos will uh, give you uh, actual examples of computing Laplace transforms and computing inverse Laplace transforms as well as uh, properties of the Laplace transform. Uh, the Laplace transform is an extremely useful technique when you're dealing with uh, time invariant linear systems. Uh, the reason is that uh, you can express or you can describe what the system does to an input in terms of a transfer function. And in, if you have the Laplace transform of the input, then you can get the Laplace transform of the output by simply multiplying the input Laplace transform by the transfer function. So it, the Laplace transform turns convolution, which as you've seen is not always extremely straightforward to compute, into multiplication, which is typically much more um, uh, easy to compute. Uh, the Laplace transform also makes it possible to solve uh, constant coefficient linear differential equations almost by inspection in the sense that you can write down from the differential equation the uh, uh, transfer function and then you can use it to uh, uh, either solve uh, for outputs given inputs or look at stability or uh, develop uh, controllers or things like that. Also, using the Laplace transform, the techniques of circuit analysis can be applied to do transient analysis of circuits. And it's actually fairly straightforward. So, how do we define this magical transform? Well, let's uh, write down the definition, talk about it just a little bit. So, the Laplace transform is typically represented by a capital letter, which is a function of s, and this s is a small s. It's in the integral from minus infinity to infinity, uh, x of t, where this is our time function, e to the minus st dt. Okay, so this is the definition of the Laplace transform. Okay. Um, a couple of things to point out here. The integral is with respect to t. So this x of t, or the t in x of t, and the t in e to the st, these will be integrated out, leaving the uh, Laplace transform as a function of s. Now, the first thing that may seem to be sort of strange to you is s is actually a complex number, which we usually write in the following form. So sigma here is the real part of s, and omega is the imaginary part. And so you may be saying, well, this, this seems like we're not actually doing ourselves any favors. We're taking a time function which is um, a function of a real valued variable and turning it into a Laplace transform which is, which is a function of a complex valued variable. And sometimes this actually does introduce some interesting complications. It turns out that if you're familiar with complex numbers and reasonably uh, secure in manipulating them, it's not bad. Um, but just to make sure it's clear that this s is a complex number Okay, the inverse Laplace transform, uh, here we'll, we'll make it a lovely spring green. Okay, x of t is given by the following integral. The integral from c minus j infinity to c plus j infinity of x of s, the Laplace transform of x, e to the st ds. Okay, and this is 
uh, actually a line integral in the complex plane where the line is a vertical line, that is it's uh, a line with a constant real value c, chosen such that um, the line lies in the region of convergence of uh, the original Laplace transform integral. And we'll talk about regions of convergence in just a minute. So um, this inverse Laplace transform then looks kind of hairy. Uh, if you're not familiar with complex uh, line integrals, then it is actually pretty hairy. So that's the bad news, that both the forward transform and the inverse transform are defined in terms of these integrals. And sometimes working these integrals can be quite difficult. The good news is that we almost never work these integrals. Uh, we, at least we never work them directly. Uh, what we will do in subsequent videos is come up with a table of Laplace transforms, or at least we'll talk about a few uh, components, or a few uh, Laplace transforms, and you can find tables of Laplace transforms online or in any textbook on this topic. And soon we'll be using tables almost exclusively to do forward and inverse Laplace transforms. OK. Um, one last, well, actually two last things to talk about. The first is that this definition of the Laplace transform is actually what's called the bilateral. It's called the bilateral Laplace transform because my limit goes from minus infinity to infinity. So I'm integrating both from minus infinity up to 0 and 0 to infinity. And uh, that's where we get the term bi, is that we're, we're looking at the chunk from minus infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity. Because I start integrating at minus infinity, I don't have to worry about any of the initial conditions that x has. That is, I don't have to worry about initial values that x might have, which in some applications is good. In some applications, it's actually bad. Uh, if you have a situation where you uh, really need to start at some finite time rather than going back to infinite, the infinite past, then uh, the bilateral Laplace transform may not be what you want to do. So there's a variation of the bilateral Laplace transform, which looks like this. x of s is the integral from 0 to infinity of x of t. Actually, I should put 0 minus, and we'll explain what that means in just a minute, e to the minus st dt. This is the unilateral. Laplace transform. And it's unilateral because it's going from 0 minus. 0 minus means that it actually starts infinitesimally to the left of 0. So that if something interesting happens at 0, for example, if you've got a delta function or something at 0, the integral includes that delta function, but nothing to the left of it. Okay, So the unilateral um, Laplace transform, again, allows me this unilateral part of it implies that um, initial conditions will be included, because I'm actually starting at some time that's not the infinite past. And it turns out, if you think about it for a moment, if, if x is a signal that um, goes from or is 0 for values of t less than 0, then the unilateral transform will be the same as the bilateral transform. So when you're dealing with uh, causal systems where h of t, that is the impulse response of the causal system, is um, 0 for values of t less than 0, and you're dealing with signals that start at, at time 0, which makes sense if you're dealing with a causal system, then the unilateral, uh, the, the unilateral and the bilateral Laplace transforms are essentially the same thing. So quite often you don't worry about what type you have, but 
again, the issues are you need to, if you've got initial conditions, you need to uh, make sure you're dealing with, you're using the unilateral transform. The bilateral transform is the one that seems to be used most in textbooks, and I've never been able to figure out exactly why. I think that it probably is the case that because the bilateral transform goes from minus infinity to infinity, it looks mathematically the same as the Fourier transform, except that we have an S as opposed to a J omega. And when you get to the Fourier transform, uh, you'll see what that means. And so the bilateral Laplace transform has the same properties as the Fourier transform. And that's a good thing if you're primarily interested in signal processing sorts of things. Again, it's not a good thing if you're looking at causal systems with uh, uh, non-zero initial conditions. So, um, one last topic and then we'll be done. And that topic is uh, the following. Let's actually clear up some space here. We'll make the unilateral transform go away for a minute. And that topic is the region of convergence, or ROC. Because I have an integral here that is going from negative infinity to infinity, there's some possibility that uh, this integral will not converge, that it may actually be infinite. And it turns out that um, every bilateral Laplace transform for a given x includes a particular region of convergence. So just quickly, if x is a right-sided signal, so it's 0 for values of t less than 0 and uh, not 0 for values of t greater than 0, then the region of convergence in the complex plane, because you'll remember again that s has a real part and an imaginary part, so this is the real and the imaginary, typically looks something like this which means that for any value of s in this area that I've shaded, this integral here will converge. Okay, And if I have x be a left-sided signal, so that it looks like this, the region of convergence is going to be something like this, where it's to the left of a vertical line. And if x is a two-sided signal, then the region of convergence is going to look something like this. Okay. Now again, region of convergence is only a big issue for bilateral, because if I'm doing the unilateral uh, Laplace transform, then by definition I'm only looking at signals that look like this. And so the region of convergence is implied as part of the unilateral um, Laplace transform. So the importance of region of convergence is that it tells us um, it, you can actually have different time signals that have the same x of s, but they'll have distinct regions of convergence. So that ends the introductory video on Laplace transforms.